and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech it is of course amazing to have you all here once again we are in a secret location in a top secret location uh, and we are actually starting a few minutes too early today because i have a meeting i have a meeting at uh, what is it nine for some reason, I picked the time nine when, oops, 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 when they asked me when I want to have the meeting, I could pick when, whenever I want, but you know, I picked it too early. So that is why we need to do Good Morning Crypto a bit earlier. So guys, what are we talking about today? As usual, this industry is crazy. We saw a hack yesterday, $30 million gone, completely disappeared from the face of the earth. Not really, but disappeared from Bitthumb. So Bitthumb has lost... 30 million dollars of their users funds. So that is number one. Let me see if this stream is actually working seems to seems to be working and then we also have Goldman Sachs CEO coming out and saying that uh, You know what cryptocurrencies might be a good idea Cryptocurrencies might be a good idea and we still don't know exactly how things are going to play out and we all need to be humble Which is quite interesting coming from the CEO of Goldman Sachs So guys, if you are excited smash them likes and we will get straight into it. We will get straight into it. So what we have here is uh, the market taking a look at the market it is actually a bit green and normally after a hack after some kind of technical issue at an exchange people freak out and normally prices drop actually but what you what we actually see today is uh, an increase so i think it just goes to show that you cannot just connect a hack to price drop and therefore Whenever you see an exchange being hacked and at the same day the prices drop, I mean most probably there are so many different other reasons for the price to drop. And the most probably it is just the case that, you know, there are more sellers than buyers as, uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Young wrote a few days ago that you know i mean most probably there is no one specific uh, reason and not one specific cause but anyway what we have here is that we have bitcoin plus 2.3 percent we have ethereum plus 3.5 ripple plus 2.6 bitcoin cash 2.7 so looking green looking green what is that 13 percent ethereum classic i mean guys in these bearish times you see 13 percent you're, you're you're like wow <laughs> what has happened but of course normally in a bear market this is nothing i mean what is 13 percent it is absolutely nothing but nowadays you are kind of excited you're like whoa 13 percent that was a long time ago we saw something like that okay looking at the big winners who do we have here enigma 21 percent and yeah ethereum classic congratulations guys if you have any of these coins at least you are a bit in the green uh and the big losers we have wakey chain whatever that is wakey wakey chain Minus 14%, drop pill, buy coin. So yeah, guys, that is the state of the market. We don't have any significant moves. Uh, 13, 20%, and that is really it. So, that being said, let's move on to the first news of the day. Are you drinking coffee, guys? Or what are you drinking? Let us know in the comment section. Absolutely let us know. Don't be a lurker in the dark. Tell us what you're eating, what you're drinking, and also what you think about everything we discuss. But anyway... We have the news from South Korea, straight from Bitthumb, namely that Bitthumb is hacked and thieves were able to steal $30 million of cryptocurrency. Now, we don't know exactly how this happened and we still don't know if it was a hack or not. However, you realize also that uh, B uh, Bitthumb is taking good action. They are taking good action to reimburse their customers, as you will see. So the news is that the Korean... The South Korean cryptocurrency exchange Bitsum has suspended deposits and withdrawals after losing 30 million worth of cryptocurrency as the result of an apparent hack. So this is still unclear exactly how it happened. But anyway, they came out on social media and, and said that we checked the sum of cryptocurrencies valued about 30 million was stolen and those cryptocurrencies will be covered from Bitsum and all assets are being transferred to cold wallet. So this basically means that, you know, you as a customer, if you are a customer at uh, Bitsum, you realize also that uh, you don't lose anything except that you cannot move your funds for, you know, quite some time. Or I don't know exactly how it's going to be, but uh, until they resolve this issue. So 
temporarily you're unable to move your assets but other than that you will be reimbursed for all the losses that has happened at Bitam. and so this is kind of you know whenever you read this news and you see that Bitam is covering the costs this kind of gives you hope in in humanity because they could have done so many different things they could for example say that you know what we are taking we are taking a cut from everyone's account or we are uh, increasing our fees to these huge fees in order in, or, in order to recover the funds or something else but you know just reimbursing is kind of a good move in my view this is a pre-recorded show no way el digo de la gota de la gota is it latino is it spanish sometimes people say it is pre-recorded but you know people you don't understand that this is completely live it is straight out of stockholm sweden and we're doing the show each and every day at 8 a.m central european summertime sometimes people are like this is pre-recorded i know guys it is completely hey by the way you know I think I forgot to change the date. This might be why. 15th of June. Oh my god. This is the... What is it today? It's the 21st of June. Yeah, th that is the thing. You, I ha need to have this automated. Tw 21st of June. Yeah. So uh, that is that is the position of our, of our affairs when it comes to live streaming. It is straight from Stockholm, guys. Uh, anyway... So that is the first news. And also, you, ma you mean, you see Charlie Lee coming out and commenting this hack as well. Namely that whenever an exchange is hacked, nothing really changes. Nothing really changes because you realize that it is like if a bank uh, robbery happened and somehow that would affect the price of, um, uh, the price of gold. If, if, you know, a uh, bank had some go gold storage and it was hacked. Of course, the price of gold doesn't care if a single uh, bank is hacked. And so the same is of, uh, with cryptocurrencies, that if the exchange does not protect the coins well enough and gets hacked, it doesn't really change the fundamentals of the coin they are protecting. And honestly, guys, I think that this will only continue. This will only continue because you realize that centralized systems, such as exchanges, they are, you know, there are bugs everywhere. You cannot write software that is completely without bugs and whenever you have all of these exchanges uh, it's all about you know when will it happen it's the Mur uh, murphy's law that everything that can go wrong will go wrong sooner or later so it wouldn't at all surprise me if for example coinbase gets hacked or some other you know huge exchange binance gets hacked it could very well happen because they are centralized system they are honeypots for hackers they <coughs> they are operating 24 7 and they are global and so there is just so much surface for attacks of course coinbase and binance have been very good at protecting themselves i'm sure they are attacked on a 24 7 basis and everyone is trying to find some kind of vulnerability but i mean i personally think that this will continue and continue and we will never see a stop to exchange hacks something that we can improve uh, although is uh, is for example that uh, exchanges reimburse we have these practices that if a hack happens exchanges need to reimburse everything and so on and so forth uh, and also decentralized exchanges i see the mad cow go going wild in the chat mad cow what is going on can you do more coverage on dag tech yeah absolutely i i think there are some interesting developments with biteball and uh, iota although you know coordinator issue but uh, uh, i've seen you ask this before so we will we will cover some dags all right uh what what else did he say that was interesting i i've been in this space for eight years now i've seen bear markets last three to four years now and this is also quite interesting so this one could uh, could be a three to four year bear market or it could recover tomorrow so then then he transitioned into talking about the markets that you know what when it comes to bear markets they can actually be several years and that is what happened in 2013 i mean we had the crash we had the crash from 2013, then 14, 15, and 16, it started to recover, and 17, it w went wild. So you see, it can really take four years. But uh, yeah, I don't know why he transitioned into this um, when we're talking about hacks, but I nonetheless found this interesting. And this is also something that Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, he, he has come out and basically shared this with his employees that, you know what, whenever you see a crash such as this one in 2013, I mean, here it took several years of very boring market from here, you know, all the way to here. Uh, but then you, of course, saw this exponential, you know, uh, growth. 
and the, the same happened here that you you had this boring market and then you saw this growth and uh, yeah uh, or actually the market i'm talking about is this one when it took several years from 2000 yeah it was 14 late 13 early 14 uh, and so brian armstrong oops uh let's go back he said basically, hey team, many of you are new, so I wanted to share about the space. That the crypto industry is like no other I've seen. Lots of up and down cycles. Uh, there has been four, uh, three or four of this now. It can be scary at first, but uh, with time you'll see, uh, scary first time, but you see it, um, scary first time you see it, but <laughs> to us who have been in this industry for many years, it feels like old news. When there is hype, people are irrationally exuberant. I love this expression, guys. I, I love this expression. I irrationally exuberant. Irrational exuberance. And that is completely true. When there is despair, people are irrationally pessimistic. Neither is true. Neither is true. Reality is always somewhere in the middle more correlated with real usage transactions per day than the price after many years of this i've come to enjoy the down cycles and this is kind of true i, I agree with brian 100 percent to in you need to enjoy the down cycles number one because you get good opportunities for getting into the market and number two because it gets rid of people who are in it for wrong reasons i mean you see for example on youtube that a lot fewer people are watching i mean currently we have 366 people watching i mean these numbers are quite low compared to the bull market and during the winter but you know i don't care about the numbers here on youtube i just think that you need to cover and you need to educate and um, this is just to show that so many people have dropped off we've lost quite a few people in this bear market and we will keep losing people this is like some kind of survival show who will survive the longest in this bear market who will still keep pushing and educating and and being and being uh, involved and being active in this space uh, and you know th this is uh, this is true bear market gets rid of get gets rid of people who are in for wrong reasons and gives us opportunity to keep making progress while everyone else gets distracted completely right and so this is also what kind of we have been doing we've we've launched toshi times during a bear market we've launched Tony, uh, toshi times spanish version during a bear market we've launched our store at toshi times during a bear market we've launched our programming courses during a bear market so i mean at least i and my team we're really using this bear market to be at the forefront when when we see a bull market again because you know guys when we have a bull market we are ready our toshi times new site is ready it's been you know operational we have all the pr best practices in place we have our spanish site we have all the courses and we are you know really ready to take advantage of that bull market when it comes when it comes and the same is for coinbase that you know what they use down cycles to build a strong foundation so we can thrive in the next growth cycle so i i think this kind of inspirational tweets that I'm thinking in the same way. You now, now is when you prepare for the next uh, uh, bull cycle. And also, I realize as well that during the last bull cycle, during the winter and during the uh, autumn, I personally could have done so much more if I just was more experienced. So I could have, for example, started doing Good Morning Crypto back then. For some reason, I didn't do it. I only did like three videos a week, which was, you know, insane because you could give so much value to so, to so many more people if you just worked more and you kind of had best practices in place such that I have now. For example, doing show every day and being, uh, and being able to do it and having like the pipeline to do the news and to do the technology. But back then, you know, I only did like three videos a week. And you realize also that during bear market, this is where you really can, you know, get uh, get more experience. And then when you when the next market comes, you are 100% ready. So anyway, uh, and this is, you know, for me as content creator and also for Stockholm Blockchain, our company uh, consulting within blockchain and we develop things and also Toshi Times, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you do in crypto. Bear market is a perfect position for you to get ready and to rebuild yourself because during a bull market you just don't have time. There is no time to rethink anything. There is no time to you know just sit down and uh, and think about how we could become better because you just have so much going on, so much happening, and you just work, 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 work. There is no time to think really. There is no time to re re, re anything. But so anyway. 
we will win in the long term by listening to our customers and building what they want. And so you, you, you'll you hear me continue repeating this message periodically. I want to teach the organization how to think about it and have uh, you share the same ideas with candidates who are thinking about joining. Together, we can stay focused on the long term and shift the world towards the and open financial system. Whoa, this is 100% correct. I, I am applauding this series of tweets. And guys, we have a final news of the day <clears throat> from Toshi Times. You see, we are hustling in a bear market. Toshi Times writer, they don't care if it's a bear market, if it's a bull market, if it's evening, if it's holidays. We are writing all the days, 24-7. Anyway, we have Goldman Sachs CEO coming out and saying that crypto doubters who dismiss crypto because it is unfamiliar are too arrogant. And this is actually something we've been um, discussing on this channel for quite some time, that you need to be humble. Everyone needs to be humble. We don't know where this technology is going to go. We, we don't know uh, how this technology is going to play out. And this is true for all, uh, or, you know, all uh, technologies, really. What is going on in the chat? I see what is the main difference of centralized exchange versus regulated centralized exchange, DX exchange. Uh, so, I mean, when it, com when it comes to DX exchange, my understanding is that Nasdaq provided them with software technology. Uh, I'm not sure it is, you know, some regulated centralized exchange. I think it's just about the software that Nasdaq provided because Nasdaq is a technology company and they also, you know, Nasdaq is not only running exchanges, they're also providing software. So this is my understanding of, of this uh, situation. But anyway, coming back to Goldman Sachs, what we have here is, the CEO coming out and saying that, you know what, we don't know how this is going to play out. And uh, by the way, my battery is running out on my computer. <laughs> so basically he's saying that if you could go through with fiat currency where they say this is worth what it is worth because I, the government, say it is, why wouldn't you have a consensus currency? And I mean, honestly, when it comes to Goldman Sachs, they have been the most positive about cryptocurrency out of all of these bankers. And now he's also talking about the fact that, uh, you know, commodity currencies in the past, such as gold and silver, were slowly phased out and replaced by commodity-backed fiat. And then this commodity-backed fiat disappeared. Now we only have fiat. So, you know, there's no reason for this not to change again. Money is always evolving. The technology of money is never standing still. And uh, it is very hard to predict how it's going to play out. And so Jamie Dimon, on the other hand, uh, from uh, JP Morgan, has come out and said that, you know what, uh, this is worse than tulips. Cryptocurrencies are worse than tulips. But uh, blank fine, blank fine, however you pronounce it, uh, says that this is too arrogant, you cannot say like this, because I'm not in the school of saying because it's um, um, uncomfortable with me, because it's unfamiliar, this can't happen, that's too arrogant. And also he continues, so it's not for me, uh, he says that, you know, currently he doesn't have Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is not for him, Goldman Sachs, as far as he knows, has no Bitcoin, but if it does work out, I could give you the historical path why that could have happened. So this is interesting because, I, I mean, just reading this last sentence, it means that he understands the fundamentals. And of course, you it is uncertain. We don't know exactly how cryptocurrencies are going to play out. There is still a huge, uh, you know, huge... Um, percentage of uncertainty in the market but you know he says that you know fundamentals are here and if cryptocurrencies play out i can tell you exactly why it happened looking at our current financial system and what could have been improved so i mean this for me this last sentence really shows that he understands the fundamentals because you know although there is uncertainty if it does play out he will be able to explain why anyway guys that is really it my battery is running out because you know when we are in this secret location <clears throat> i don't really have my normal setup and therefore we need to be more you know more agile we need to take you know keep an keep an eye on the battery and they need to be more vigilant to what is actually happening on this machine right here where I do the streaming. But that is really it, guys. Be absolutely sure, if you haven't yet, to smash that like button. And uh, I'll see you all very, very soon. Also, I have my meeting very soon, so I need to get going. I hope you learned something, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I hope you understand cryptocurrencies more. I hope you also understand what happened to Bitthumb and the situation there and also the future of centralized exchanges and why I think they will just keep getting hacked. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a great, what is it? Have a great, great Thursday.
enjoy your day and goodbye guys goodbye goodbye smash the likes see you soon have a great day goodbye